So the party people were founded in 1980. It points to gang territories and boundaries. Even the police superintendent admits that there's a high concentration of rival gangs here packed into a neighborhood of just one and a half square miles. To the west are the Satan Disciples. On the other side of Damon, the Ambrose, which have three diminishing but separate factions holding turf across the neighborhood. Next are the Bishops, who until recently had a second group east of the Dan Ryan. Then the Latin Counts with their rivals, La Raza, on the other side of Blue Island, with the party people confined to a pair of blocks off 18th Street. Seven well-organized street gangs, according to police, but if you count all the factions, ten individual sections of gang turf spread out across Pilsen, with one or two less organized splinter groups operating independently at any given time. Uh, Michael was the founder of the party people, and it's said that a year later he was killed, and a war started when they actually started like, gangbanging, pretty much like a gang. They ended up joining the Folk Nation, sponsored by the 2-6 of Little Village, and that's how they adopted the gangster. Um, so, and this is like a whole, whole nother video that I have to do. So every gang in Chicago either is gangster or insane gangster or almighty. Um, it's a cousin it's almost like it, it, it builds your family so the gangs are almost in a, in a constructive way of like a family like our first cousin second cousins um stuff like that so that whole thing comes in and like <laughs> this is what i mean is that it never ends you don't have to keep going going and explaining more and more and the rabbit hole gets deeper but just like folks folks and people the five point star and the six point star i will be doing that video next week but the party people adapted the gangster, gangster party people. And, and in 1988, a war with the same disciples and the Rasas started. The war with the Rasas wasn't too long. Uh, they ended up, you know, calling the truce. And uh, that's one thing that I have to say, man, that back in the day when a lot of, a lot of gangs had like real chiefs, real leaders, uh, they would actually try to keep as much peace as they could they would actually come to an agreement and you know uh squash beefs the gangs were very organized from the top down now they're very splintered a double-edged sword for police who are fighting internal sectarian street violence all of the leaders the guys who were the chiefs and gang leaders are now prison you know so there's no one out on the streets to control this you know it becomes a haywire the is on the way Tape. The gang enforcement unit is heavily armed. Guy in the back seat. Keep your hands where I can see him. Come on out. Sergeant Matthew Little is on the front lines. He is also a soldier with multiple tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. Especially working in Afghanistan, it's it's very very similar. Um, you're basically working gangs. It's a tribal culture in both places. Just how? Um, it's very hard nowadays because there is no structure. There is nobody out there actually looking out for their people. So they're running around like crazy just you know shooting up this is why there's wars in between inside the, the same gangs and wars with everybody everybody's fighting everybody there's no control right now um they ended up calling the truce with the rasa and just you know 18th street like i said 18th street is flooded with those gangs the rasa the counts the bishops all of them are there they ended up opening up a hood close to my grandparents' house on 56 in Maplewood by Gage Park. They call it G-Town. Um, and they actually branched out to uh, Berwyn and Cicero. But the ones that I knew the most were from 56 in Maplewood, Gage Park, because they're actually pretty uh, popular over there. Because um, uh, they were cool with a lot of people. They had an all-out war with the Land Kings, but... When I was on 59th Street, we actually didn't have no beef with them. We actually kicked it pretty hard with them, and we backed each other up pretty hard because uh, the Kings were pretty much in control of 51st and Pulaski all the way down to Western. That's a big, big, big hood. I'm talking about, it's called Crown Town. It is a really big hood, so, you know, um, 
people were starting to move to that side of town. Uh, Mexicans were coming from 18th Street, from 26th Street, and they were moving to that side of town. So, uh, you know, 56 and Maple was uh, one of their one of their pretty solid hoods for a very long time. I don't know if they're still there. If you guys know, drop a comment, let me know. Uh, I know that 59th Street has changed a lot. I am doing a video about the 59 SDs that I was actually one of the founders. Um, I don't say that with like popping my neck or anything. I just say because it is part of my story, my, my history and what I went through as a kid and growing up, you know, doing time and stuff like that. Um, I share this message and everything to promote change, not to promote gangbanging, not to promote the sale of drugs, not to promote you going and getting a job with the cartel. I share this message so you guys can see that it's actually possible to change even going through all that and growing up. You know, that's, that's what it is. At the end of the day, this is not a cooking channel. This is for your entertainment purposes and for you to see that your past is not defined who you are party people black and white and they use a bunny as their sign like most party crews party party people were centered centered around pretty much their structure and everything was about having a good time just a bunch of teenagers girls guys hanging out you know having a good time partying and it, it, it it was created to just be a club centered around partying, pretty much. It's, it's, it's just, it is what it is. Chicago has always been really big on house parties and, you know, that house music. And it, it, it was, it's culture over there. And, you know, if you're not from over there, you really wouldn't understand it because it was, um, you know, house music was created in Chicago. And this is when the DJs started going into the houses instead of being out on the street, like in the breakdance times. The DJs started going into the houses and uh, everybody would ditch school and go to the house and have a house party and just party. And this, a lot of these crews started doing that. And this is the thing is that they were cool with all the gangs, but that always backfires. And I'll tell you why. Um... So the land counts are fighting with the Ambrose, right? They hate each other. They hate each other for years, years, decades, decades of them killing one of them and then the other one's killing one of them. And it, it never, the hate never goes away. It's always there. But you're cool with both of them, right? Well, sooner or later, one of those, one of those gangs is going to want you to pick a side because they're not going to be cool with you being cool with the other side that killed one of their boys. So eventually you're going to have to pick a side. I don't care how it is or what it is. It was just like the, the video that I just dropped with the, with the KGBs. They started the same thing as a party crew, dancing, battling. Uh, for a long time, everybody thought they were going to be future Ambrose because that's who they were kicking it with and they ended up you know, doing their own thing. And a lot of these crews, when they start off, really don't know what they're getting themselves into until it's too late to back off and then you have to go full throttle forward uh, because war is war. Um, and with this, you know, shit starts to pop off and you can no longer just function as a party crew. You actually have to start gangbanging. And gangbanging means colors, graffiti, war, turf, guns. And what happens is you have to actually get money to actually be able to support all of that. So. My name is JC. I am Wrong and Strong. Don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Give somebody a hug. And remember, you only live one life. But if you live it right, one life is all you need. Live savage. I'll catch you guys on the rebound.